Welcome to Artisan Guitars. I'm gonna call my friend Jesse. Uh, we're gonna go talk about Maiden Guitars, and I haven't seen this location because Artisan recently moved. They moved from, they were down in like Franklin, Tennessee, which isn't far, but it's far enough that this is better. This is like right close to downtown. Artisan Guitars, but oh, how can I help you? Hello, is Jesse in? Can I ask who's calling real fast? Yeah, Jeremy Shepard. Jeremy Shepard, what, yeah. uh, what's about? Uh, old debt that he owes me. I'm here to film a, a YouTube video with him, and he told me to call him when I oh, got to yeah, the parking okay. lot. Uh, we'll be down. We'll be down. Let you in. Awesome. Thanks. Jesse, we're not home. So the new place, huh? Dude, this was opened in 1924. It was one of the original feeding seeds in Nashville because the train tracks are right out the back. So basically, yeah. if the train's coming up from the Gulf and going to Chicago or St. Louis or something, they're going right by us. So come on in. It's kind of like a blend of the brands that we work with, yeah. the builders, the luthiers, and the builders that we work with on new stuff. The Collings folks, the Hudson Dalton folks. I think you're familiar oh, with yeah. the Hudson Dalton folks. Right. Yeah, you I know. May really have, well. you may have, yeah, you yeah, they're may. like 30 minutes from me. That's I was there last week. Right. Yeah. But we'll not only take, we have new stuff because we're ordering all the time or we're custom yeah. ordering, but people know us as a resource for them. So they'll, hey, will you take my Hudson Dalton as a yeah. used item? Yes. We'll find a home for it because people come to us looking yeah. for them. Yeah. So it's. Because I think you're the only Hudson Dalton dealer in Asheville. Yes. Yeah. We're very okay with that. Yeah. We're very okay with that. And Bill and Ellie, who own the shop here, have been dealing with Kimberly and Mark and Jeff for yeah. many, many, yeah. many Have you years. met Brian? I've not. Dude, he's amazing. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, it's a neat, it's a great feature for those guys, which is cool. Oh, yeah. So, How cool is it that the first guitar that I saw when I came in is a freaking Henderson? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a deal. special piece. Um, it's probably not going to be with us much longer, but there's a really good, really good video of that guitar um, being played by Jonathan Brown, who's a local uh, picker. If you can play the Jurassic Park theme song at 100 times slow speed on this guitar, I will definitely buy you lunch at some point. Somebody's estate, they say, okay, I've got um, eight Les Pauls and a 335 and a Jurassic Park PRS. Come on. This yes, one is we will insane. happily help you find homes for those. And then of course, oh, it's a good wall. It's a, it's a wall. OMs, single O's, double O's, a parlor at the yeah. top. So yeah, I don't know why they still have the bear on the payroll at the factory. He seems to, yeah. but he's, Good no one wants stuff. to argue with him. This is fun because it was a mid 90s Nam guitar oh, cool. that is got a little bit of the aging to it as they start to, I mean, it's pretty, but it's- That is beautiful. I mean, it's like minty, minty. Oh, yeah. Come back here and say hi to Bill and Ellie who own the store. I don't know if you met either of them at the I old shop. I think I've met Bill before. Jeremy, Bill hey, Warren, Bill. Got it. and his wife. How are you? Hi. How are you? Hi, yeah. Good to see you. Yeah, I Even love with the new man. place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh yeah, I love the new place. Thank you. Good, thanks. Yeah. Some of this stuff is, I mean, we still sell a lot of things off the website, but yeah. not all of it is advertised. We, uh, from moving to the other shop and streamlining what's yeah. viewable, but obviously with maintenance, the accessories oh, that you cool. need to do are the trust. I think we're the only people that carry these and these, and they're always here. Okay, yeah. So we have a lot of folks coming to us saying, I have a maintenance. Uh, so, so I've never seen this. So yeah. inside a maiden yep. is it's an eight millimeter. So but it it's needs, a nut. Yes. So this fits, and and if your maiden is after about 2010, 09, 10, okay. this is applicable. If it's before that, you need you go in. If you can and believe this, you go in through the the end pin, go <laughs> all the way through the body. It's like one of those old, you know. It's, that's it's awesome. Like no, no, it's not. <laughs> Nothing what about it is. So that's why this <laughs> happens. So these go right okay. in, these are easy. If I can adjust a neck on yeah. a maiden using that, it means it's easy to use. Okay. Um, let's look at H and D and then we'll go in here and then we'll go to maiden because you wanted to. Yeah. So more custom shop stuff. What guitar or finish do you feel like you have come around to or when have had the most polar change on? I still really dislike when butterscotch is really butterscotch. Yeah. I can't, I can't come around to that one. Okay, that's interesting. I've, I've, yeah. I don't know, that's an interesting question about what I've come around to, because I'm still, 
I did. I've did, never... you, did you hate Antigua? I've always hit, everyone hates Antigua. I love Antigua. Oh, well, you're wrong. But the, <laughs> and no, I've never, I've never liked that. I, um, I was born in 1937. But every- 1937? 1937. But anything that I've ever found, remember those strats that say anniversary on the pickguard because it's oh, a 79? Yeah. I've always wanted one, but yeah. anytime I've ever played it, I'm going, it's so heavy. No, thank you. So, um, had you come two hours ago, there would have been 50% more mate and custom shops on the wall. But that's how quickly they go. Yeah, Because the, the mate and custom shop is one dude. I'm sorry I don't have more to show you, but that's the Jumbo TE Personal. Same pickup that's in it as in all the production stuff, if they're listed as the AP5 yeah. Pro. Cause this is like his normal size. So I, the, I have never played a mate and. Okay. Well, we'll I never there. see them because yeah, yeah. Good I luck. mean, I've bought and sold guitars for 20 years, yeah. and you just don't see them used. No. Well, we see them, and, and no, going back mind, to what like, I, I said, live in I know. the middle of nowhere. So production stuff, when you get used to the terminology, that the EBG, electric bluegrass guitar, okay. which is totally modern terminology, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, and 808 refers to the shape. So the 808 is kind of like, if you look at it screamer. face on, like a tube screamer. I don't know which came first, the tube screamer or the egg. Um, but the body shape and size, if I just look at it face on, is sort of orchestra modeling until I come yeah, to the side. Yeah, this would be bluegrass. And it's a deep dreadnought body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As deep as their dreadnoughts. Okay. Custom shop, similar thing, that's a jumbo, but the 808, definitely the most popular shape, and that comes in the Nashville, which is the sunburst one. Okay. Comes in the Tommy production model, which comes in cutaway and non. The cedar tops, the SRSs, come in cutaway and non. The, the, the cutaway is the Frampton guitar that he was like, he played the cutaway and went, yeah, and he played the non-cutaway and he just didn't make any noise. And so when we took him two more at the rehearsal space, he played the other, and he goes, played the cutaway, goes, yep. Like, mm. it's just something about it rings for yeah. him. And even his front of house guy, they were all like, I mean, we mix Frampton and we have for years and the acoustics that he plays have never sounded like a guitar. So what? <laughs> so it's that pickup system, man. It's, it's so much of Tommy's input. Obviously Keith Urban is using that pickup system yep. and that guitar, unless he's using one of his old Martins. But if you go see an Urban show or an Eric Johnson show or Neil Finn playing with Fleetwood Mac or a Colin Hay show, I mean, oh you're not talking oh, about Colin people Hay. that just sound okay. These are like yeah. world-class exactly. songwriters, but also the playing, the Rick Springfield model, it's so rad because obviously, you know, he has Aussie roots. So the Aussies know these as their Martin and Gibson. We're, as North Americans, we're newer to understanding it. So thanks to people, obviously, mm -hmm. like Tommy, who's the ambassador of all ambassadors, and yeah. Mr. Urban, who is... I mean, none of us are ever going to play guitar that well, so maybe we can get a little bit of... This is the newest model that they released. This is the Joe Robinson model. So now that we're familiar with the terminology, you and I both know this is an 808 shape mm -hmm. with a cutaway, a, something that differentiates the Tommy model and the Nashville model from Joe's model is that Joe's has wood bindings. They all have Sitka spruce tops. But Joe decided to do the Tasmanian Myrtle Wood back inside. So it's got, a, if I can see the figuring, I don't know if the camera picks yeah. up the figuring. It's super subtle, but it's there. And then they also did a mahogany neck on Joe's guitar, which is, uh, you and I should play this one and that one because the mahogany neck is, is what's on the Tommy custom shops, but it's not on the production model stuff. So it was neat that Joe chose that. And then they didn't splash his name all over it's just tasteful on the back of the headstock so if you don't want people to know that you're a joe fan they don't know it immediately if you want to know you're a joe fan you're looking at it the whole time going oh yeah he's he plays really well i should practice every time i see his name i go yeah I'm... typically when you see and hear tommy you think god he sounds like it sounds so good but you realize he's actually plugged in and what usually what we're listening to is the pickup which it, it is like the single problem that i have with most acoustic pickups yeah, yeah of course um, and like I find close, like I yeah. ha I've gotten like a K and K or a venue can get me close. So the guitar itself obviously does a lot of the work, but if we ignore the microphone completely, mm -hmm. even the piezo because it's so hot and underneath each of these strings, underneath the saddle, there are individual piezo crystals for each string. Mm -hmm. So you can boost that signal and then EQ just that signal. Ignoring the mic, it already sounds like a much, much, much more yeah. accurate pickup. 
when we bring a little bit of mic in, you then just add the air. Because mm -hmm. we've never heard, or we, we have, but we've never maybe enjoyed live performances with plugged in guitars that we've heard on record. Just about every record we've ever heard of an acoustic guitar has been a microphone and some room mm -hmm. and very little done to it. Yeah. That we want to think that. So many folks are switching to these because of the accuracy yeah. to pick up. itself is almost like a little EQ thing. So if I'm 
maxing out the piezo and then just bringing even more mic in, I start to hear more air and a bit more fingers. Got it. But if I want to EQ the mic, I gotta basically move the microphone to change the response. Okay. It's funny, it immediately like kind of reminds me of the like that Colin Hay. That's why. That's why when you hear Colin live, you realize why it sounds so much like a recorded guitar. Like, is his signal is it like auto? Dude, Please. seriously, that I have been chasing a, a guitar that sounds like a guitar yeah. just louder. Yes. My whole life. And so this is this is our 30 second, I'm setting that pretty flat, just plug it. you that the, the master volume should be 50% or higher. This I've just got everything else flat. The more mic I bring in, the more it's going to get whistly, but... That's just flat. Not okay. that interesting. There's a tiny bit of verb on that guy, and our room has some verb, but when you say that Colin name and you've heard him live, you go, oh, oh, oh. Style. Yeah. Jesse, this has been so good and so fun, and it's just the place is amazing. So, how can people find you? Uh, Artisanguitars.com. It's on YouTube. Artisan Guitars. We do videos all the time. Every day, there's usually something new loaded. The Instagram is Artisan Guitars. The Facebook, uh, you guessed it. Um, and then, if they want to call the shop, the number is listed there. If you're coming to Nashville and you want to come hang out, call us first because everything that's here on the website is. If it's on the website, it's here with a photo. If it ain't, it ain't here yet. So we need to make an appointment. But everything to get in that door and to deal with all of this or Joe or to get Steve to work on your guitar or to talk to Bill about any umpteen million tiny wood details that he will tell you about, call us first. And the number's on the website or email us info. Info at artisanguitars.com. Sorry, we're back on mask lockdown maintenance mandates here in Nashville. It'll be over soon, but... Thank you for coming to spend time with us, Jeremy. That was, yeah, that's totally awesome. It's been so good. And so for all of the people that asked me, so Hassan Dalton doesn't sell direct, but Jesse is a trusted friend who knows Hassan Dalton guitars really well. So if you have questions about Hassan Dalton's, email me and I'll pass you on and I will introduce you to Jesse. Yeah, we deal with the folks in Stanton often and we deal with them um, with every little detail of the guitar. We can help you with it. If, if it's a question of wood or design or size or shit. Yep. love it that's what yep. we live for so get in touch awesome yeah if you're buying a custom guitar you need to have a trusted advocate and friend that can help you walk through that process because i bought the wrong huss and dalton and i love huss and dalton but i bought the wrong guitar because i didn't know what i wanted and i just let opinions louder than mine take over so anyway thanks everybody for watching see you guys later this has been artisan guitars